Well, investing in cash flowing assets is always the way to go. I think people need a place to stay. People need a place yeah. to live. Um, I think what happened was is that there was such an increase in people that got into multifamily syndication. Yes. Like, you know, somebody said they went, went up like a couple thousand percent of the amount of yes. syndicators that got in, in over the last like four or five years. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that's when you have to pivot. But then at some point, it'll be a great time to invest in multifamily again. I mean, I yeah. think it's always, you can always find opportunities in multifamily. I think. I the, agree. The, Cash calls are pretty hard hit, you know, and people don't like them. But you're right. I mean, what's the, the future holds? is again to not, most everybody on syndicators have stopped giving cash flows because they want to preserve, you know, with this unchartered grounds. They just cannot give a little bit money. Well, good morning, good morning. I'd let Bo start the show today. Yeah, Bo, brother. Yeah, I, I think a lot of the people that watch our, our show they, they want to know these questions from an, a real estate investor doing bigger deals. Um, so I think, I think first, first question that's been queued up is what is your investment strategy? What's your, what's your overall approach? Can you kind of give us an idea of how that's changed over the last year or so? Sure, sure, Bo. Thank you for asking that question. Somebody who asked us, you know, the key thing is with the market changing, in the last four or five years, what I've seen, I've been in it for about 15 years now, more than around there, in multifamily, in commercial space, Bo. But what I've found is that the, it was a seller's market, big time, for last three, four years, especially. The buyers were there. They had the powder or the money, and the banks were giving loans except for like last year, the interest rates went way up and this year also they went way up. So a lot of people bought these things or product, commercial properties at a higher price. And in my case, I've been selling properties actually because I found that if I can get equity gains higher and still have meat on the bone for other people, then why not, right? So in my portfolio, I've been selling it but I've been pivoting also into senior living because with silver tsunami, the, the demand is there and it's going to stay there. But COVID has not helped there either. Oh, what happened with the COVID? The banks got shy in giving construction loans. So there is a kind of challenge in that field over there also. But multifamily as a whole, I have been just buying like just one I bought last year, one I bought the year before, and one I bought before, one year before, and then two before that. So only five deals I bought in the last four years, just to be very transparent with everybody. But the thing is, we've been selling portfolio like a lot of other shrewd, you know, syndicators are. The key thing we see right now, we have to kind of wait and see have the money ready so that as this market develops and a lot of these bridge loans are coming due, which a lot of people are listening and watching and, you know, looking at the reports, $1.3 trillion, I was told, right, is coming due. That's going to make havoc, especially Powell didn't do a good job this week. Market is tumbling like crazy. And, you know, that's not going to help much because they are saying the interest rates may stay at that level longer even now. We were thinking that they might be cut in 2024 after the hike in November this year of 0.25. Nobody has the crystal ball, but the market is just selling and selling in a stock market because they feel that maybe these interest rates are not going to come down as they expected in 2024. It's a long answer, but the big thing is, I found a lot of my other partners, they've gone into some other, uh, other than real estate. They've gone into businesses, like you and I have talked about franchises and you know laundry mats and ATMs and buying manufacturing machine, you know, properties and so on like that. 
Uh, so yeah. I think in my case, in Monil case, uh, you know, my daughter and I, we've been kind of really holding back a little bit and trying to see some other thing we talked about yesterday with my other partner was maybe giving a million to a million to save the day for some of these people, uh, good assets, mm -hmm. A-class assets or A-minus assets, if they need some injection of money, but they can't raise money, then we are thinking to maybe uh -huh. come out with our side and have it take a first position, you know, right after the bank or something. So we are debating, so, but will that move? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah so, so, okay, if I heard you, that's an interesting strategy. So um, some sponsors get into, they're in bridge debt right now on a multifamily asset and, and basically they can't do any more capital calls. They might, you know, they might not have the bandwidth to do that. So yes. then you can come in as almost a debt instrument uh, that yes. takes um, takes a, a junior position to the senior debt, but then yeah. you're superior to the pref, you're superior to the limited LP uh, investors. So that's actually a really <laughs> strong investment <laughs> because I'm doing a deal right now and I'm helping somebody finance actually a bridge to bridge on a multifamily. And uh -huh. if we weren't able to get the loan proceeds, so we, we sized it up and we're, I think we're going to be able to do it getting another bridge loan. It's very hard to go bridge to bridge, yeah. but if yes. we needed to, we could like, we could have a group like yours come in with two or $3 million, which would, mm -hmm. which would be superior in lean position than the LP equity. Yes. Um, but it would also yes. save the day. So you guys that come in with the new capital are, are way safe compared to the LPs, but the LPs would be in bad shape because they're the ones that are going to take the haircut if the, because the operator would have had to sell an unstabilized asset yeah. and the broker's opinion of value, they would have taken a probably a $4 million haircut. So, so it's kind of the save the day funding. That I think is a, that's a great point. I think this is a good business model right now to go into. Thank you. Because it's, you. it's I not don't that. No. We've been debating like what could be that premium we should get on our money. So, you know, that's something if they were to go out, first of all, we have to underwrite the property and make sure in two years or so it's going to come back up, right? And it will save the day for the investors, definitely. Otherwise, it could go into foreclosure and they will lose everything. So what's the premium if we are bringing two million or three million to save the day? What kind of, you know, can we expect? So, I think that's my question. So, so I, 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 yeah, and I would say it would be a, it would be a combination of uh, yield, meaning like almost like a, a debt instrument where you're getting, so let's say, 12 percent plus a portion of the equity. That would be pretty good, yes. right? Right. So you're you're guaranteed this return, <laughs> and then when you when they go to take you out on the refinance, when they're able to stabilize and go to agency debt, then yes. you're getting a kicker. So you're getting equity, like based on that appraised value, you get X percentage. So they have to pay you. You came in with three million. You've been getting a twelve percent monthly. You know, just like a hard money loan almost. Yes. And then at the end, you, that three million plus equity gain kicker of mm -hmm. another you know 10 percent or whatever that is so then you made 3.3 .3 million plus the 12 percent interest on the the loan so yeah that would be good yeah. i think i don't know if that's the model but just thinking no that's what we've been yeah. debating the question was what can we expect and i think the other part is how desperately the other party needs our money <clears throat> see that's going to be dependent too right we only want the best of the best assets in best areas, which we can dictate, right? What we, because there'll be so many out there. So we'll have to really make sure we are giving our money to safe people, good operators. That's what we talked about. And a property which really carries the meat, <clears throat> you know, which we'll be able to refinance at, in two years or so. It will be a short term, you know. Uh, debt that we gave. So it's a debt play, which I've never played before, by the way. So I think the exciting thing, which I like in the whole thing is when you are the CEO of a company, you're always looking at how could we pivot? 
how could we change to see the marketplace where our investors can get returns? So where else are you seeing sponsors uh, struggling besides multifamily right now? You know, I would say multifamily is one construction per se everywhere. You know, some of the developments, I just saw a report where uh, construction loans have decreased, but the permits have increased in certain areas because people were already planning these developments. But this whole debacle of interest rates has threw a shoe now where these monies they raised for the land and development cost and all, it's going to get longer and longer further down. And the cost of construction is going up. I cannot believe that. Inflation, we are trying to reduce inflation in USA, but the cost of material is going up, brother. Oh my gosh. I mean, this COVID has its after effects. And now I'm finding even being a syndicator myself and developer, how hurtful it is, <laughs> you know, to the real estate uh, P, you know, industry, actually. And by increasing these interest rates and keeping it there, it's going to hurt even more. So hospitality, yeah, for really example, good. right? Yeah. Hospitality is the other it's, one. It's we are trying to pivot to it. The problem I find over there also is that the ADRs have gone up, occupancies have gone up at the tourism places, but the construction loans are high, interest loans. You know, and the cost of material has gone up. So if like in a hotel, you started three years back to start to get a uh, big, big name brand to buy it, you know, uh, give you the name. And then you started developing, you know, all these different plans and everything. And the cost of two years back was way different than the cost of constructing that hotel right now. So it's just a mishmash mm -hmm. of so many uh, you know, and the things that we just never thought that COVID is going to bring. I, I don't know if we can blame everything on COVID, but, you know, inflationary measures, which again, by producing so many trillions of dollars of money during COVID, it has given the buying power of the consumer so high that they are able to still buy groceries and still buy at higher price. And that's where the inflation has come. <laughs> yeah, well, the thing is, is that uh, I think the word pivot is a, is a great word to be using right now. And the fact mm -hmm. of the matter is, is you always have to be able to pivot. It's the ones that can pivot that survive. The ones that can't pivot because they don't foresee, they kind of, they put their head in the sand and they don't pivot. Yeah. <laughs> they get, they get slaughtered, right? And so it's a time of so pivoting. Mm -hmm. and, and so I think a lot of that is what we're dealing with right now. Um, but the weird thing is, is there's still a shortage of housing and yeah. mm -hmm. which is, which is the, the, the single family space, which usually gets hurt first before multifamily, it seems vice versa now that the single family is doing fine. Um, I don't know. Yeah. It's, it's, it's definitely interesting times, but yeah, construction in general right now is costing so much. Now your multifamily strategy that we we're just talking about, what would you, what markets would you typically invest in those type of deals? Would it still be the Florida's, Texas's of the world? Yeah, you know that is where the demand is. I don't know why the migration patterns. We look at those quite a lot, which everybody should look into those. Like Knoxville, Tennessee, people are coming in. Nashville, people are coming in. You know, Carolinas, people are going there. Florida, people are coming in. Texas, always people are coming in. I mean, so the big thing I find, you're right, a uh, lot more jobs are coming there too. See, that's the thing. I just heard like, Amazon is going to be employing 250,000 workers more, workers, workers, real people in their plants because of Christmas coming up, because the online business is taking a huge growth. I mean, it's going to be even bigger this year. The shopping malls are declining and the strip shopping centers and everything. So it's the whole landscape is changing. It's the whole landscape. So 
I think those emerging markets are safe bets in my thinking. I know for the Seattle or Oregon area, I know we are working on that also with the Bend Oregon, which is a good superstar. Now, Los Angeles, hold on. I just read a big report yesterday. Los Angeles, so much shortage of, you know, housing over there and affordable housing. That's the other part. I think a lot more affordable housing needs are there in this country. So the mixture, I'm just kind of in a crossroad here. And I think most everybody is, you know, uh, in the in the real estate commercial world as what is going to happen with the interest rates. Because so much is riding on that. So much is riding on yeah. it, you know. <clears throat> and actually, the uh, federal government, there could be a shutdown at the end of the month. The whole government could shut down. It's, I yeah, saw right? that. And so, that will not happen. <laughs> that will not happen. They never let it happen. They always yeah. have that. You know, they're going to increase that limit. But you're so right. But the thing is, average person who's got retirement funds of so much and baby boomers, 10,000 retiring every day, those baby boomers are probably left the job, you know. They have certain amount of savings that they want to live off on. And, you know, with interest rates going high, it's better for them actually because they are able to get 4.5% interest in, on their money and all that. But other side of it is when they have stock market, their money into mutual funds and, uh, you know, whatever, and the market dropping, they are getting hurt on that side. It's small increase in the interest rate on this side on their savings cash, but the mutual funds and stock market and their 401ks, it's decreasing there faster than what they're making. So it's a pretty difficult situation being number one nation in the, in the world, <laughs> you know, being USA, uh, you know, we are the leaders, but some of these turmoils, I don't know how it's going to shake out, you know, the bonds are going higher and you know as that's a big macro and micro economists we should bring them on brother <laughs> yeah i know it, it, it's 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 fascinating but i think yeah. you know investing in cash flowing assets is always the way to go i think people need a place to stay people need a place yeah. to live um i think what happened was is that there was such an increase in people that got into multifamily syndication Yes. Like, you know, somebody said they went, went up like a couple thousand percent of the amount of yes. syndicators that got in, in over the last like four or five years. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that's when you have to pivot. But then at some point, it'll be a great time to invest in multifamily again. I mean, I yeah. think it's always you, you can always find opportunities in multifamily. I think I the, agree. The, I totally right. Like, agree. And so. So like at what point are those those. um some guy that I interviewed on the podcast, he always talks about making surges of income, right? And that's kind of the Vinnie Chopra syndication platform was always getting there first and mm -hmm. making surges of money, right? In the multifamily yeah. space. And and it's not holding long-term. It's because you were able to like get, you know, 40, 50% 40, increase on the value of your properties by yes. forcing appreciation yes. and making big windfalls of cash. So at some point, again, there'll be, opportunities which could be right now by fixing people's bad bridge loans and helping them stay alive and because you're helping them stay alive you get a bigger piece of the cake is basically yes. what that strategy is and i like yeah. that strategy i think that's a win-win strategy you help a sponsor save the deal because that they probably have millions of dollars in, or of investors capital mm -hmm. you make great returns for your investors and everybody yeah. wins because that deal would have sold. They would have had to list it. Yeah. And, you know. So they have deep so, discount. Deep discount. Yeah. You're so right. In this market, people are looking for 30, 35% off the, you know, uh, replaceable cost or what they're worth. Or even 40. I hear some people were saying, Vinny, as it gets to be worse later part of this year and next year, <clears throat> you know, it's going to be difficult for people to survive because cash calls means that you have to ask your present investors within that LLC to bring more money to save the day. 
right? You know, mm-hmm. and I've never done a cash call. I've just had some promissory notes that I did last year from some of the investors, but they chose, you know, to come up, you know, and give give the money to us. Cash calls are pretty hard hit, you know, and people don't like them. But you're right. I mean, what's yeah. the if future holds is again to not most everybody all syndicators have stopped giving cash flows because they want to preserve you know with this unchartered grounds they just cannot give little bit money when i say little bit money if it's a pref of seven you know you're getting uh, you know divide by 12 right so you're getting point zero something but if that money is protected in the llc for rainy day or whatever might come interests uh, you know the insurance has gone up that's a other problem you know which has happened in in these states midwest states uh, texas florida you name it the cost of insurance has gone skyrocketing and then the bridge loans and the variable rate loans have made the mortgage go higher and that's why the syndicators they are telling and educating investors you know, please give us some time so that we could get this, go through the wave of this high interest mm. rates and all. Yeah, it's yeah, a tough yeah. game. It's a tough, well, tough time. Tough time for everybody. Yeah, yeah. But resilience is the key. We got to all be resilient yeah. because if yeah. that's the thing, you know, every everybody is loving life when things are going well. But the reality of life is that sometimes there's the teetering of the saw, and sometimes you have to be able to withstand and be resilient and work things out. But the good thing about real estate, it's very forgiving and it just, yeah. you usually can work out these rough economic standpoints, but thank you for all the insight today, you guys. Thank you. And thank you guys. Many, it was really good. Thank you so Thanks much. So much. And please send us some questions guys, because Bo and I are here on Vinny and Bo show. We have been doing it for many years now. We want to help you with the topics, with different things, with, you know, giving best loans. Bo is, master at it he's now the guru of franchising you know and he's got lots of great ideas and things and the beauty i like about bo i want to give him a he didn't ask me to do this is that he finds ways he he's got so creative mind to find the money for you you know different ways and that's beautiful you want in a loan broker and a franchiser that you know and if you want to, if you're accredited investors or sophisticated also, we take both and, you know, reach out to me because there will be opportunities coming. They are coming, just like Bo said. Perseverance is the key and then finding and pivoting is the key. Thank you, Bo. Thank you very much. We'll, we'll see you all in the next episode. Yeah, we'll see all you right. next episode. Thank you. I'm a long time fan and I watch all your guys' content. Awesome. We're very, very, very invested in our community. Wonderful to be here. This is Vinny Chopra and also my good buddy, Bowling Steve. And we are so happy. Amazing what's gonna happen. So you know, we're amped up to do the show, and we got a lot of hype about the guest today. So I'm excited. To- oh, I know. So excited to come live to you all. Thank you.